MSD finishing on a little bit of glory. Is that the ingredient that is driving CSK success at the moment? Let's find out on Hog's Vlog. Well, there are three points that I want to bring up on this vlog. MS Doney, is he going to retire? Uh, the contest between Boomer and Coley over the weekend. And KKR body language against CSK. I want to talk about that as well because there are a few issues there. Firstly, let's get to MS Doney. I think he's going to retire at the end of the year from IPL cricket. The way he got out to truck Vorty the other day, the wrong and clean bowled him, bamboozled him. There was a huge gap between bat and pad. I think the reflexes of the 40-year-old are just starting to wane when it comes to the bat. His keeping has been sensational. Now, I'm not trying to uh, demonise his career because it has been sensational. It is fantastic that he's still going. It's good for Indian cricket. It's good for CSK because behind the stumps, his leadership out in the middle is keeping things calm. He's helped Jajaja go, uh, grow as a cricketer. He's helping the youngster of Tarkur, develop as an all-rounder, and also Chaha uh, with his swing bowling as well. So he's done good things for Indian cricket with those youngsters and many more that are in that squad. But just the way that he walked off, that body language, the, there was a glint in the eye that said, mm, I think I've just lost that sharpness. I think my days are numbered. Hopefully not. Hopefully he can turn it around. Um, but at the age of 40, and with the role that he's got with the Indian team going into that uh, T20 World Cup, I think he'll move into a management role or even the head coach of CSK, probably the management role and uh, sit alongside Damian Fleming, help out develop the youngsters of uh, Indian cricket, but also uh, create a good strategy for the, uh, the new wave of uh, CSK cricketers moving forward because you need someone of that quality around that knows Indian conditions, knows the Indian people and has a good rapport with the players. Rightio, let's go on to the contest between Boomer and Coley. It was the second over of Boomer's uh, spell. It was the fourth over of the match. Now, Mumbai Indians went to Boomer rather than what they've done uh, in the previous couple of occasions where they've tried to save Boomer a little little bit later and uh, try and use him or maximise him with four overs later on in the match. But they wanted to be up front. They wanted to break that uh, dominant opening partnership of RCB and really get on top of Virat Kohli. And uh, he was attacking with the short ball, which is a good option in T20 cricket against Virat Kohli. He had two back uh, out deep square leg, one behind, one in front. Now it was the second ball which was short. Virat Kohli tried to take it on, top edge over the keeper. But then the next ball Virat Kohli uh, took on the pull shot again and got it just between those two deep fielders out in the deep and he got six runs for it. Now that could have gone down the throat of any one of those particular players. Now this is what T20 is all about. That was the fourth over. You had to uh, increase the scoring rate. You had to take on the, uh, the likes of Boomer and uh, put the pressure back on the Mumbai Indians. So Virat Kohli took a calculated risk. On the opposite side Boomer took a calculated risk as well, going away from that good length where he's very strong and attacking Virat Kohli with the short ball. Now, when you go with the short ball, you can leak a few runs and it's going to be hit and miss. As I said, that could have gone to any fielder out in the deep and we've seen a lot of top order batsmen uh, being caught out in the deep by hitting those deep fielders. Every now and then you get the gaps as well. So it's a bit of cat and mouse, a little bit of luck, a little bit of risk taking and... I, th I think that was probably one of the best contests uh, or short, sharp contests uh, in the bigger contest. Boomer, Virat Kohli. The thing that finished off that over was uh, as well and turned the momentum for RCB in this particular uh, phase of the tournament because I was struggling with two losses was Barat in the fifth ball of that over, hitting that ball through covers and you ended up taking 16 off Boomer's over. That gave the rest of the RCB or um, players extra confidence moving forward, thinking, right, we've just dominated their best bowler. Now we can uh, take that on and create that momentum going forward and really attack that middle order of the Mumbai Indians batting. And they, they did sell well, RCB. That game last night... 
I've really changed my thoughts on them. I think uh, they will definitely finish in the top three of the IPL ladder moving forward. But I don't think they'll be good enough for CSK and Delhi Capitals. Now, KKR versus CSK. Body language, guys. Body language out in the middle. Okay, there was a player out there. I don't want to mention his name. He's a dominant player. We all love uh, his entertainment value. All right, I'm going to put it out there. Andre Russell. Now, he's feeling the pinch the other day against CSK. Uh, the heat was getting to him. He was leaning over out the top of the mark with his hands on his knees. Now, when you're feeling under pressure like this, youngsters, you've got to still look like you've got positive body language. Stand tall. Take in some deep breaths because when you crouch over, yeah, uh, it sucks out the oxygen from you. It doesn't let you breathe early, uh, easy, and it tightens up your muscles even more. So stand tall, take the deep breaths, and if you're feeling the pinch, call your captain over, have a quick chat, and just show the opposition that you look as though that you're in control. When Andre Russell crouched over a couple of times, it showed the opposition that he was feeling the pinch. All of a sudden... As an opposition team, you start to look out the fielders and the other players in that team, see if they've dropped off a little bit as well. Because when one person um, sort of falters, then it just brings and drags everyone down. And you don't think it, you, you, from the sidelines, you don't think it, ha, uh, it, it happens that much. But I've been in so many teams where just one, one person drops off and all of a sudden, you seem as though you're on the back foot as well and uh, you just lose a little bit of positive energy. So for me, KKR just lost that momentum in those latter stages just with people feeling the pinch of the pressure, the heat, uh, the f physical exertion out there. You can't afford to show a team like CSK those faults uh, when you're in the middle of the game. That was a little window that opened up for CSK and they took the game away with Jadeja uh, really capitalising on that drop of energy. So that's where KKR might look back at that game and say, right, we missed an opportunity. That could be the reason that they don't get in the Final Four last year because it's not often that you play CSK and you get an opportunity where you're on top of them and you should beat them. So, um, yeah, I'm a little bit frustrated being a KKR fan there. But anyway, there's so much good cricket this week, OK? You've got the likes of Rajasthan Royals, Punjab Kings Eleven, KKR, Mumbai Indians, uh, all fighting for that fourth spot. So games are on the line right now. All exciting cricket. There is no reason why people should not be enjoying the IPL right now. Get out there. Get behind your teams. And uh, let's have a little bit of fun this week. And I don't think we're going to have the table sorted out by the end of the week as well. I think we're going to have another good week's cricket uh, in a fortnight's time as well. Absolutely loving it. All right. Stay safe, guys. I'll see you soon.